I want to get to uh, Bellevue right now where things are starting to get a little bit tense. Tear gas has just been deployed by the Bellevue Police Department. Police have shut down Northeast 10th Street because of a protest in the street. And according to the Bellevue Police Department Twitter page, protesters are moving through the downtown core of Bellevue. Some are breaking windows. This is according to their Twitter account and destroying property. Officers have had objects thrown at them. Uh, police are saying stay out of downtown Bellevue right now. Um, police in Bellevue had said thanks to everyone who have sent messages alerting them to the potential activity there. They are calling this an all hands on deck situation for the city of Bellevue. Some windows have been broken, uh, destroying property in the downtown core. 10th Avenue Northeast is closed in Bellevue right now. That's about all we know for right now. We'll keep tabs on the situation on the east side and let you know if anything changes. And Mark, you know, I talked to the police chief, Stephen Milet, just a few minutes ago from Bellevue, and I do believe they're bringing some enforcements into Bellevue. So uh, they may have more officers there. Uh, we'll find out. We'll check in uh, as we follow the activity there. Let's talk about what's going on in Seattle right now because activity is picking up. Marching, shouting, chanting. King 5's Vanessa Mishanya is live on the scene. And uh, what is happening? Hey, Joyce, so we're at uh, Cherry and Fourth, and I'll just have our photographer turn around. Uh, this march has been a peaceful one. It began at Westlake and then turned down second and then marched up James down fourth. And to be honest, this is the moment of most tension that I've seen yet. The, the protesters have been peaceful, demonstrating, chanting up until now. But as you can see, it seems as though they've paused in front of this police line. Now, we've been marching down second for the majority, and the police have been uh, blocking any side streets, kind of guiding this group again along second and then up to fourth. Um, I've been told by by the demonstrators here that this is more of an impromptu march. Uh, there's just a gathering that began at Westlake that started off peaceful and then has remained peaceful. Uh, people that I've, I've talked to are here because. Not on the police me? side. Excuse me, I got to come over here for a minute. Again, it's it's remained peaceful thus far. I talked to some protesters um, about yesterday, asking them if they agreed with um, how it all unfolded, and they said that you know the events and pain that led so many people to this emotion. She didn't say it was necessarily justified, but she understood where that anger came from in this crowd is a very passionate one and again still has remained peaceful all up until now and protesters are, are still remaining peaceful and they have a very very strong message so again we follow them from Westlake we've seen state police here state patrol we've seen SPD we've seen the sheriff's department and if you just look up there uh, you can see some what looks like armored vehicles uh, tactical uh, equipment standing by from this vantage point. I can't tell if that is National Guard or Washington State Patrol, but there are plenty of law enforcement officers involved here. Uh, but again, for, for now, uh, through downtown, a much different scene than some of the more memorable images from yesterday, Joyce. Uh, more peace uh, chanting and people staying really on message here. And it looks like right now, Vanessa, just behind you, they are on the move. You know, most people had their hands up, and I was curious what they were chanting. Uh, and I, I know you have to follow them, but if you can tell us, what, what were they chanting? Why were their hands up? They were, uh, Joyce, they were chanting, hands up, don't shoot. And that's, um, they've actually stopped a few times along the route, even sometimes kneeling on the ground with their hands up. Um, and again, I think it just speaks to Again, the peaceful nature of, of what the protesters are, are here for. Um, I haven't seen any aggression at all. These, these folks are staying on message uh, that they want to see change, and they're, uh, they're marching against police brutality, uh, against the death of George Floyd, and the uh, systems that they feel are unfair against uh, people of color. So that is what they're chanting. That's probably the chant we've heard more of. Um, we've heard no justice, no peace. We've heard uh, other chants of that nature, but hands up, don't shoot. I think I've, I've heard the most, Joyce. All right, Vanessa, we're going to keep checking oh, and in with you. We have a fight on the ground now. Jeez. This is the first aggression that I've seen from protesters. 
Again, I want to excuse any profanity that you might hear right now as this situation unfolds. There is one protester on the ground. Um, I did not see the action that led up to it, but it seems to be under control. And we have other protesters encouraging the crowd to keep it moving. So that is what we're going to do. Again, this seems to be contained to the one protester on the ground. Vanessa, We're going to back up a little me, bit. But there's been a lot of discussion about who is actually peacefully oh, protesting. It's tough and to hear you, Joyce, but I'm. Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, we're all trying to distinguish who's part of an Joyce, anarchy group and who's the protester. Um, you know, it's very hard to tell because, again, up until this point, we've seen no aggression from the crowd. We've seen people holding up signs, Black Lives Matter, in support of justice for George Floyd. But um, I don't see anything blatant that says this person is with an anti-fascist group. This person is here for the real reason. Uh, so we've just been kind of witnessing that. And again, up until up until this very moment, everything has remained peaceful. Uh, what I assume what happened is that there was some altercation between a protester and a police officer. All right. Well, it's good that you're keeping a safe distance away. We're going to keep uh, coming and, uh, back to I you. I also have one progresses. of my colleagues on the ground, uh, Sebastian Robertson, who's in this crowd with me, and I got. Hey, if you'll walk with us, you can see, turn around, Dave. Another protester has been taken into custody right there. Uh, police, we started at 2nd and Cherry. They're now moving the crowds north on 4th, if you'll continue to walk with us here. Protesters had the goal of keeping this calm. That was the chant, no violence, as they uh, headed northbound uh, south on 2nd Avenue. They then turned up west and... Uh, Two groups combined to form one group of protesters. Uh, it was calm, tension was, uh, was slowly rising, and then it kind of popped, if you will, when police took, took down one protester, uh, and then another uh, woman shortly after seemed to have been taken into police custody. Police standing at the ready with, um, with gas canisters, uh, weapons pointing at the ground. Organizers are doing their best to, to keep this measured trying to keep the protesters under control to not distract for the message. As we see police uh, trying to calm things down here. As we approach 4th uh, and Columbia here. Sebastian, uh, it's Mark Wright back in the studio. Um, have you talked with any protesters so far, and do they know that a curfew is about to take effect in 45 minutes? Well, that's the other thing, too. The curfew is about to kick in. If we look right through there, you can see the woman uh, still on the ground there between those two bicycle officers. Uh, she seems to be getting some type of attention here. Um, really, uh, uh, two different, if I, if I can divert a little bit, Mark, two different feelings here. Um, I talked to some protesters whose, whose hands and gloves were literally still dirty from cleaning the streets this morning, say they're heartbroken by the damage that was done. But at the same time, they wanted to come and protest tonight. Um, so there is uh, definitely that, that, that dual sense. But as far as the protest not happening f uh, for the curfew, curfew, obviously that's not the case. As uh, um, that organizer right there, the gentleman in the Dreamers uh, sweatshirt, who seems to have been kind of leading the crowd. He actually chatted with, um, with police before this all started, um, kind of getting direction from them, bringing them the message that they're not here to cause trouble. Uh, they've been instrumental in kind of calming people down as they re uh, redirect this protest back up forth and towards Westlake Center. So, Sebastian, I think one of the big concerns is that there will be more looting down in the Westlake area. Does it look like this group is headed back toward Westlake? And, and, uh, and what have you heard? 
Well, just before those um, two people that were, were uh, taken into police custody, you could hear the, uh, the organizers uh, on a megaphone trying to redirect people away from the officers that were blocking access to the freeway and, and, and saying, hey, we're going back to Westlake. That appears uh, what's happening now. You can see the police officers moving. At one point, um, there was actually two groups of, of protesters um, kind of separated from each other, two large marches. Um, they, they joined up and became one, one march, um, and it appears now that they're heading north on 4th. Uh, police on bikes um, are um, presumably going to try to head, uh, get ahead of them as they go on foot to 4th Street. So that's the latest from, uh, from 4th in Columbia as the protest keeps moving.